Hello, Striders. It's creepy. That is my third take with that voice, and it has killed my throat every time. Uh, hello, guys, and welcome back. The reason that I did that stupid Dracula voice is not because I had a stroke while doing the intro, but because it is October, and I thought that we would celebrate with a little bit of a spooky theme this month. So, since Magic the Gathering has wonderful archetypes like zombies and werewolves and vampires, I figured it gives a pretty good opportunity to do a Halloween-themed month. Uh, so all month, all of our decks are going to have a spooky theme. Uh, might be fun, they might be competitive, but all month I'm going to try to at least keep it spooky. Uh, so it'll be... I'm going to try to do four. That's going to have one of the videos actually happening in November. Uh, but it'll still be sort of Halloween-y. <laughs> so... You know, we'll work around it, or I might just do three weeks. Uh, but either way, I think it'll be pretty fun. Uh, and I pr probably will not do the spooky voice every time, uh, but it is fun to do. <laughs> I don't know whether I can continue to do that and keep my voice. But I'm excited. I think this is fun. I really enjoy Halloween. I don't know whether you guys that may be across the pond celebrate it, uh, but it is pretty popular here in the States. Everybody likes to get dressed up and have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, and I've, I think it's just one of the more uh, interesting holidays versus just holidays where you have a picnic with your family. A uh, little bit more involved. But anyway, let's get over into this week's deck. Uh, we're going to be playing a zombie infestation treasure hunt deck. Now, Treasure Hunt is a very fun card uh, that has had a few decks that it's been involved in over the years, but uh, it's never really taken off. It's never been extremely competitive, but there's definitely some fun things you can do with it. Uh, the Swan combo saw, um, saw Treasure Hunt a lot. It was a really easy way to draw plenty of cards and make that combo work out pretty well. Uh, and then, of course, Zombie Hunt has been a thing for a while, uh, but you just don't see it that often because it's not super competitive, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, and honestly, I feel like it has a few opportunities to pick up some wins, even against strong decks in Modern. If they get a little bit stuck and you hit the right draws, you can probably... Um, Depending on the matchup, you might be able to get a couple wins. Uh, I definitely wouldn't advise taking this to a GP, but this could be fun to take to FNM, especially considering that it is very affordable. Uh, I have some of the more expensive uh, dual lands in here, like Watery Grave and Dark Slick Shores, but e even online, these are under $2. Uh, so if you're playing online... This deck is still under $10. Uh, I think it was like around $7. Uh, and you could certainly cut these out for like uh, dismal backwaters, things like that. Uh, so if you're wanting to build this, you can definitely make it even cheaper. But online, definitely very affordable. And on paper, these are a little bit expensive, but not super expensive. And if you play modern, uh, you probably already have these. So, and maybe the fetid pools, because they were pretty easy to get a hold of uh, after Amonkhet. First few weeks, people went pretty crazy over them, but the uh, dual cycle lands did get a little bit less um, in demand, and you could pick them up pretty easily. Uh, and then as far as the zombie infestations and the treasure hunts, those are still very cheap. Uh, so you can grab those pretty easily. Uh, and then Reliquary Tower is like a dollar. Uh, but anyway, uh, so very affordable and very fun, actually. I've had a little bit of a hard time with it in testing, but still very fun to do. But what does it do? Uh, well, if you don't know what Treasure Hunt does, you reveal the top card of your library until you reveal a non-land card and put all of the cards, including the card that you revealed that was non-land card, into your hand. Uh, so a lot of 
a lot of fun that this card can have. Uh, if you like holding a lot of cards in your hand, this is the card for you. Uh, and Zombie Infestation, discard two cards, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Uh, so you guys might see where this is going. We're going to try to get a ton of cards in our hand with Treasure Hunt, dump them all with Zombie Infestation, and make an army of zombies to run down our opponent. Uh, a lot of fun to do. Uh, doesn't always happen, but we're going to try to make it happen this week. Uh, otherwise, uh, just lands. Uh, you don't really want to play anything else because it clogs uh, the treasure hunt zombie infestation engine. That's why we have no cards in our sideboard. Uh, you could probably play like maybe some tech lands in there, uh, but maybe a man land or two. But honestly, I think this works. This is pretty strong in my opinion as far as the build of it. I don't think that there's really much else you can do with it that wouldn't overcomplicate the deck and make Treasure Hunt whiff. Uh, keep in mind that Treasure Hunt does uh, stop on itself. Some people forget that every now and then, but Treasure Hunt itself is a non-land card, so even another Treasure Hunt stops whenever you reveal it. That is kind of a bummer when that happens, because usually you want to get to your zombie infestations. Uh, but that does happen, so keep that in mind, especially whenever you're playing four copies. Uh, you really don't need more than two zombie infestations. Uh, you play two pretty much so that one of them doesn't get countered and then you're out of the game, uh, which is how this deck loses, is one of the is both of them get countered. Because you have no graveyard recursion, uh, so if those two get blown up or get countered or get picked out of your hand with a duress or something like that, uh, then you're out of the game pretty much. Uh, so that's why the man lands could happen, but I don't know. I tested it, and just the man lands, you're not going to win the game beating down your opponent with a 2-2 man land in modern. It's not going to happen. So realistically, this is what you got. Um, so... There's definitely ways you could do it differently, but for our purposes, I think that this is a good, good deck to mess around with. Uh, to set it up, you're pretty much just going to need uh, either a an island and a reliquary tower so you don't end up dropping all of your cards with treasure hunt or already have zombie infestation out when you treasure hunt. Uh, or have enough lands to where you can play zombie infestation and treasure hunt in the same turn. Uh, otherwise, you might end up treasure hunting and have a ton of cards in your hand that you have to discard, and then you waste a treasure hunt, basically, uh, because you want to have tons of cards in your hand, because you do have to discard two for zombie infestation, so those cards can go by pretty quickly if you have to discard a bunch to hand size. Uh, so that is the deck. Uh, otherwise, I think the deck speaks for itself. I mean, there's, you know little explanations about you know what land base you want to have out but it pretty much uh, I don't want to say it plays itself but it explains itself let's say it like that uh, but so I will quit rambling and we can jump over into the games and see whether we can take on the world of modern I think this is our first modern deck actually so yeah exciting you modern players finally get a video from me and it's um certainly going to be high quality stuff but anyway i'll see you guys in the games okay guys i think it said we were going second uh we're playing against thail i believe is the name there uh we're gonna mulligan because we legitimately don't have anything <laughs> uh we do have treasure hunt in this hand so i think we'll keep it uh a second treasure hunt on top That's questionable. I think I'm going to leave it on top. Our opponent plays Hallowed Fountain. Full disclosure, we are in the Just for Fun lobby uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I want to make it past turn four if possible. Uh, and also, the people that are in the tournament practice lobby are trying to 
get some playtesting in against tier decks and uh, don't really want to interrupt their playtime with zombie hunt normally just annoys them so gonna keep it here in the, uh, in the nice and spicy just for fun I wish that the getting serious lobby actually had people playing in it I've never seen a single person play in the getting serious lobby in any format I don't know why they keep it around like unless I'm just missing the like hot and spicy times where everybody's on okay I'm gonna play the swamp we're gonna pass because we don't have a uh, reliquary tower out and I don't want to draw half my deck and then not be able to do anything with it I think I talked about that in the uh, introduction to the deck I'm gonna fit it pools during my instep and let's see what we can hit with our treasure hunt not gonna play a land because we want to get to our reliquary tower drop the treasure hunt let's see what we can find I love these full art treasure hunts uh, well we found another treasure hunt uh, so we have almost all of them now collecting them like Pokemon cards another canopy vista wondering what our opponent is playing with Bant colors and modern alright well if it was good once we do it again treasure hunt number two maybe hit a reliquary tower uh, let's see microphone kinda getting in the way here we do find a reliquary tower do we find okay so we did get an infestation so that works out perfectly uh, oh man no I passed oh my god why did I do that why did I do that okay well it's not over yet angel that's interesting well let's play the infestation that I should have played last turn microphone is slightly getting in my way um, we could go ahead and play I guess we'll just play a swamp and cast another treasure hunt I uh, only got three cards off that one but that's alright treasure hunt no we could only be so lucky well, on our opponent's end step we can drop 28 cards so we get 14 zombies so that is more than enough to kill our opponent our opponent taps for nothing Alright, so, zombie infestation, I think we are going to get to the uh, horde that I said we wanted to get to. This is definitely going to be a um, veritable bukus of zombies. I don't know, sometimes zombie infestation clicks and sometimes it doesn't. 
kind of like me with women. Except uh, Zombie Hunt more uh, consistently clicks than I do with women. A little joke about how I'm a lonely person. Just gonna let that joke linger in the air for a bit. Pretty happy with where I'm at in life though, so don't worry guys. Good old Creepy Eevee's doing fine. Discarding another zombie infestation. Sometimes it's questionable to do that, but I'm feeling pretty solid about what we've got going on right now. Alright. So, 14 zombies on board. Let's let them do things. Alright, so our opponent scoops it up there. Drawing into another treasure hunt. We actually couldn't play that treasure hunt because it would kill us. Yeah, that is one thing to keep in mind about Treasure Hunt. Uh, unless you're planning on winning that turn. Uh, but of course, with that, let me read the wording on it. Yeah, because you would just reveal until you had no cards. Because you would keep going because you... That would have been our last treasure hunt, and we'd already gone through two zombie infestations. So, I can't remember whether revealing it would kill us, because technically we're not drawing it. Uh, but we would never reveal to stop revealing. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure the revealing just stops, because we're not actually drawing. Uh, but so, we would have to win that turn, or else whenever we went to... Uh, draw next turn we would die automatically and we do not have a wonderful lab maniac to save us from that so what do we have going on with this hand not much we are going to be going second so we're on the draw this hand looks pretty good we do have a treasure hunt. Let's see what's on top. Not anything we want. We are pretty good on land as we are right now. So, what does our opponent have for us? Starts out with a forest. A very pretty forest, if I might add. So we'll drop the watery grave. Uh, we're not going to pay to... down our dark slick shores next turn unless of course we draw into a reliquary tower which we do not we'll go ahead and drop the shores a little bit of a lag right there my internet has been uh, inconsistent to say the least recently uh, so that's part of the reason why videos have been kind of slow Choosing Rhino. Is this like four color, five color big stuff? If so, that's interesting. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and tap for blue, casting treasure hunt. We do get to a reliquary tower, so we are a okay. We play it and we pass. So now we have an infestation, we have a lot of treasure hunts, and we have a pretty good amount of cards. We can play an infestation and a treasure hunt at the same time next turn. Well, in the same turn. Can't quite do it at the same time. Well, I'm recording this on a Saturday, so I'm going to try to get this up Saturday night and then have part two of this up uh, on Sunday. I know that the schedule is still a little bit off. Things are 
finally starting to quiet down around uh, my part of the world as far as my personal life getting things under control now so hopefully our schedule can get a little bit more normal you guys totally owe me I am sitting here on Saturday the one day you can get the Szechuan sauce from McDonald's and I am here not getting my Szechuan sauce uh, from what I hear it's pretty good from what uh, a couple of my friends have said of course uh, by the time this video comes out I think that you guys will have missed your opportunity uh, so that kind of sucks but hopefully you guys knew about it already if you guys wanted to go and wait uh, what I hear was like two hours to get some sauce and I saw the like saw the cups that it came in and they're like tiny like you're barely getting any sauce at all which of course I wasn't expecting like a massive amount of sauce but still our opponent's got three of any color mana he wants to work with uh, and we can get 13 zombies out but I don't think we're gonna go for all 13 because I think we're gonna hold on to those treasure hunts just so that we can go really crazy We gotta be careful with them though, we are getting towards the end of our deck. Of course we are in a position to just go for the win next turn. Uh, unless our opponent has something, he does have three mana to work with, so we do have to keep that in mind. In hindsight, I don't think I would have waited in line for the sauce. As much as I love Rick and Morty and I appreciate a good uh, joke, don't know if I'm willing to wait two hours in line for the sauce. If you guys did, let me know down in the comments what you thought of the Szechuan sauce. I'm always curious about what you guys have to say about things. You guys are fun people. We did pick up the win. Our opponent wasn't able to get anything going. I was scared that that was one of the ones that gained him life uh, whenever a creature entered. Which would have been really unfortunate for us. <laughs> Uh, considering that we were going to generate quite a lot. Uh, that was a quick match. So let's see if we can grab another one. Alright guys, so we're going up against Mad Arab. And we are going to be going uh, second, I believe. We're going to keep this. we got a treasure hunt to work with. I think we're good. So May Mad Arab, Mad Arab... Depends on your pronunciation. I believe Arab is the correct pronunciation. Uh, so let's just start off with an island. Hopefully we will draw into a reliquary tower. Our opponent starts out with an altar of the brood. Uh, so mill, but then we have a plains. So not quite sure what we've got going on here. There goes an island. This is actually quite scary because we could um, end up going through our combo pieces pretty quickly. Uh, if he starts milling out two of our infestations, we're out of the game. Alright, so Alter mills again, mills another island, so we haven't run into that problem yet. Field of Ruin. So I really don't know what we've got going on here, but we'll cycle our fetid pools. Uh, 
things so far. Well, I think we need to push to make something happen here. So let's treasure hunt and hopefully draw into a reliquary tower. And we do get one. So that is all we needed. So for next turn, we've got another reliquary tower on deck. Our opponent goes to do... Oh man. Oh yeah, I forgot that that is the... Um, basically a ghost quarter. So yeah, unfortunately we are going to have to discard the hand size here. Uh, but we didn't lose a ton, but definitely more than I'd like to. Completely forgot what that card did. We mill out another card. Let's see what we got. There's one of our zombie infestations, so we are definitely at a critical position. Squadron Hawk with a catcher's monument, gets a token, squadron hawk hits, he'll mill again, he doesn't have the mana to cast another hawk. This is actually kind of interesting, like a white tokens with a side of mill. We've got a few cards from, uh, Amonkhet already out, so that's pretty cool. I enjoyed Amonkhet. I'm trying to decide how I feel about Ixalan. Let's treasure hunt, see what we get to. We only hit three cards. It's not quite what we wanted. We could treasure hunt again but it doesn't really help us because we'd have to play a land now to do it and if we do then we're not going to be able to play reliquary tower which means that we are not going to be able to keep the cards that are in our hand so we're gonna have to discard two cards there kind of a bummer the biggest thing is do we mill out another zombie infestation if we do we lose So Bontu's Monument. So that's the one that black costs less, but what is its other effect? Maybe you cast a creature, lose one, gain one, okay. Let me take two. Let's go for a treasure hunt. So we draw into another treasure hunt and no reliquary tower. Not at all what we want to see. But that's four treasure hunts, so that takes us straight to our zombie infestation. Unfortunately, it does not take us to a reliquary tower. But the good news is that our opponent has not milled our win condition. So we'll discard one of each. Oh yeah, two of each. Oh, more than that, okay. I really, really didn't know what I was doing there. So, the compass, our opponent is just full of surprises with this. What does this flip to again? Uh, untapped target attacking creature. Okay. Oh yeah, that's the uh, Maze of Ith. Alright, so here is the problem. We do not have another treasure hunt to
to draw us a ton of cards for infestation. So we have one, two, three zombies to make. That is not quite as many as I'd like to be making right now. What is the condition to flip it if you control seven or more? Okay. Alter the brood, milling again, gets a land. I don't know, because our opponent hasn't quite gotten to what he needs to win but I feel very confident that he is going to get to what he needs now. Because he is going to play some Squadron Hawks. He'll be able to play two more this turn. We're going to get burned for each one. So we'll go down to 13. And we're going to mill off of each one. So we're going to mill three cards now. Milling is not as much what I'm worried about. Oh, and then, of course, the warriors are going to also trigger a mill. Uh, so we'll go ahead and always yield to all of these guys. Squadron Hawk. So we're down to 16 cards. I'm not super worried about dying to mill. Let's make a zombie for a blocker. Of course, we're not going to be able to block the uh, Hawks, which is part of the problem we have. And our opponent has plenty of blockers for us. That's one of our other problems. I don't know, a lot of it comes down to what our opponent has left in hand. Which very well could be anything. Uh, I really don't know what else what else could be in our opponent's hand? This has definitely uh, been an interesting one so far. Well, there's our reliquary tower that we have been searching for. We'll make a zombie and attack with all of our zombies. We're really just... I, I don't really see a way for us to get out of this. I think we are stuck here. Not to say it has not been an interesting one though. Just got a barricade. big bad triggers and he bounces something so he can just bounce the bird play the bird again for more triggers so now he has one solid blocker and several that would have to die to anything that they block Of course, at this point, blocking outside of the um, out of the barricade 
Oh, okay. All right. I forgot how Moto works. Would not be the first time that I have made mistakes with Moto. Uh, but as far as outside of blocking with the barricade, I probably wouldn't even block. Yeah, especially now that he has the barricade out, I don't really see a, a way out at all. Another warrior enters the battlefield you control. You may exile target creature card from your graveyard if you do gain one life. Okay. Well, I think we're pretty much out of this, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop this one up. And we'll see what we can do in game two. That was interesting, though. I white black with mill and tokens and squadron hawk but no soul sisters so just a whole lot of, of very different strategies but effective uh, I liked it it was interesting I like it I like it a lot Interesting to see those, what would be considered a tier deck, um, played differently. Uh, not quite as fine-tuned, but just to see a little bit different spin on it is always fun. has as far as a side deck I cannot imagine what would show up honestly that's the thing about playing in the just for fun lobby you never know what you're gonna get as far as um, as far as decks to go up against especially whenever you see a lot of cards that you don't generally see so if you're planning on playing within the context of modern uh, sometimes you show up unprepared and get taken um, taken off guard and that can lead to some problems for you. I think that's the biggest problem that players struggle against whenever they play against newer players uh, is just not being accustomed to seeing other cards uh, that might not be as powerful as uh, the cards that they're used to seeing but it's a different card than they're used to and they get thrown off uh, we're going to play first. This hand looks very nice. Of course, with this deck, it's pretty much like, do I have a treasure hunt? Okay. <laughs> but that is what a lot of treasure hunt decks, unfortunately, boil down to. Just the nature of the card. And there's a field of ruin. But if we can get going early then we should be all right I think blowing up our reliquary tower last game was pretty significant pretty um pretty simple replacement for uh, ghostly quarter if you don't have it not quite as fast, but it is a thing. Let's see. Does not have a creature to exploit unless he plans on exploiting himself. Okay. So now we've got an exploit engine going on. This is interesting. I like it. Alright, so that does not draw us what we want. That is pretty much what we want. Let's just go ahead and play Treasure Hunt. We're going to play it anyway. Uh, we get another Treasure Hunt. So let's just play the Reliquary Tower. Can't blow it up yet. 
probably going to blow it up next turn, but in all likelihood we'll draw into another one. At least that is the goal. So now the question is, does he have something he wants to play this turn, or does he want to keep Field of Ruin open? Looking like he's going to use it. Yeah, goes ahead and uses it now. Not a bad idea. Take one here from the Sadist. Exploit was a fun mechanic. I wouldn't mind seeing more of it. Alright, so let's go... Treasure Hunt. We only get three cards, but one of them is a Reliquary Tower. See, if I was smart, I would have not tapped one swamp. You could make an argument for leaving open the island, but I think it would have been better to uh, go on with the keeping open the swamp. And also, I could have uh, just played a swamp and played the infestation instead of the reliquary tower, and then just discarded the hand size with the um, infestation, but I want to play it a little bit safe. I don't want to discard a lot of cards uh, and then him have some kind of board wipe, get rid of my tokens. Still probably in the long run would have been the smarter play, but Since when do I make the smart plays? Am I right? You guys have been watching long enough. Pays a life. Norn's Annex. Okay. That could be a problem. It's actually a major problem. Let's get an infestation into play. How much do we have to pay for this? Alright, so we can pay life if we have to. Uh, I'm actually going to play another land because I'd like to have uh, extra mana to work with on board considering that we're probably going to have to pay for these annex triggers. Or, not really triggers, but costs. And if we start playing, paying with life too quickly, we could get into some trouble. What we really need is to get to expirate. Okay, so that will prevent us getting to treasure hunt. Uh, so we are now in a rough position. That is one way that you can turn this deck off. Well, with that said, we have no way to accelerate our draw. So we're going to have to work with the zombies that we can currently create, which is not a ton of them. Let's go ahead and make a couple. So we can at least play defense. We could definitely wait till end step, but I'm just going to go ahead and dump them out now. Mm, 
not really a huge reason not to, considering what mana our opponent already has tapped. And the fact that they are already in combat step. So we can currently swing with all five and can pay each one uh, individually without having to pay life. So I'd say that we're okay because this equates to 10 damage. You can block one of it. Uh, so we'll pay one. Oh, that's right. We have to pay white. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Alright, so to deal 10, we have to take 10. That's slightly annoying. Completely forgot that it had to be white. Problem is, we really don't have another option. And as our opponent starts playing creatures, Bantu's monument is going to start tearing us down and building him up. And we are currently at two less life than our opponent. He can now block two of them. So we essentially have to pay two to deal two, and because our opponent is ahead of us, that means that we are dead. But good game to our opponent. I like that deck. That was very fun to play against, uh, except for the part where you expirated my win condition. <laughs> that was rude. Not a fan of that. Not a fan one bit. Uh, but so that is the games for this episode, I think, guys. Uh, I am on a little bit of a time crunch, so I hope you guys can forgive me. Uh, things are still a little bit crazy, but um, definitely getting better here around my place. Uh, so I definitely want to thank all of you guys who sent me some good vibes. Uh, much appreciated. Um, the person in my family that was in the hospital just came home today doing great. So that's, uh, that's good. Uh, rest of the family recovering from everything else that happened uh, last week. So, um, things are looking good. I'm feeling uh, a lot better. I'm still a little bit under the weather, but as far as uh, mental state, definitely doing better now that some of these things are clearing up. Uh, and the whole family seems to be a lot less stressed, uh, which is a good thing because it was getting a, li getting a little stressful last, uh, last time I spoke to you guys. Uh, but I appreciate you guys' patience. Uh, you guys have always been very awesome to me, uh, and I love making these videos for you guys. Uh, just that, that really cheers me up every week to be able to make videos for you guys. So I'm glad, I'm so glad that you guys enjoy them uh, and that you guys have been patient with me. I'm also trying to get some videos going on on my own channel, uh, finally kind of revitalizing my channel. So... I'm going to have the link to it down in the description. Uh, some of you guys are familiar with my channel because of have uh, spoken to you guys in the comments through my channel. Uh, but you'll be able to find the link to go and check it out if you'd like to. Uh, I currently have one video up on it now. Um, but I plan on adding more. I did have some, but I'm not really great about uh, how they turned out. And it was a couple of years ago, so... I've set them private, maybe they'll come back at some point, but for right now, uh, moving forward with the new projects that I'm working on, I uh, don't really have a set thing that I'm going for, I definitely want to play some games, uh, that is what the current video that's up on there is, but I just want to have some fun with it, uh, and flex my creative muscles, uh, and just kind of use it to do whatever I'm feeling like, and uh, challenge myself creatively. 
so that's what I'm doing there so I'm done plugging that now I'm gonna get back to plugging this channel so if you like the video be sure to like it to show your support and if you'd like to see all of my videos as well as the videos that all the other great creators on Magic Gathering Shrap make be sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll see all of those things right there in your lovely YouTube feed uh, we greatly appreciate it and with all of that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.